Hello and welcome for a new edition of Road to Talks. Today I'm going to discuss dynamic susceptibility of piping systems. I would like to start with uh, some slides from the Road to User Meeting 2017 about this subject. Um, at the time um, I was discussing uh, how should we uh, treat vibrations in piping systems and there's basically um, uh, two uh, possible vibrations. Um, if we look at the single um, mass oscillator or, or any res resonating system, um, if you excite the system far um, below its eigenfrequency, then basically the system will just react in a uh, like a static uh, load, just in the same way as the uh, excitation happens. But if you go closer to the resonance frequency of the structure, then you will um, be able to excite some eigenmodes and the um, uh, resulting oscillation can be much bigger than the um, original um, uh, uh, excitation itself. And this uh, can be potentially dangerous because even a small unknown vibration can read to could lead to very big amplitudes as a result. Yeah? Um, so if we have a forced vibration, this is typically uh, rare and uh, then usually the excitation is known and um, uh, so we have to more treat this resonance problem here. So um, if um, I during a piping design we know that we have reciprocing pumps or rotating equipment, we may even know some of the frequencies or uh, the exact excitation, then we can just do um, a harmonic excitation analysis. But what to do if we do not have this information? Um, the resonance appears uh, if there is a coincidence between the uh, excitation frequency and the resonance frequency, if the position of the uh, excitation is where the eigen mode shape has some amplitudes and where the direction is in the direction of the mode shapes. Um, and uh, so uh, if any of these uh, um, data is available, of course this is a big help to reduce the risk, but sometimes we just don't have this. Um, information and uh, this brings us back to um, the dynamic susceptibility and uh, so um, the dynamic susceptibility is an idea that was proposed in EN 13480 uh, uh, at the time it was a, a preliminary appendix A3 um, and the idea was to calculate the uh, ratio of the stresses relatively to the maximum vibration speed so um, let's have a look um, at this norm. It has now been published here in uh, the uh, Annex A. So it's uh, the chapter about dynamic susceptibility. And here we see that they um, are basically say that the, the maximum stresses are proportional to maximum velocity. And so we're basically just looking at this proportionality factor and say, yeah, how, what's the ratio in between those? And they define a fundamental dynamic susceptibility as being the dynamic susceptibility of a straight pipe. And uh, so here's the analytical formula for this fundamental uh, dynamic susceptibility. And they even give a value uh, for the straight pipe, which is uh, 58 MPa per um, meter per second. So. So the unit is, is stresses per uh, speed, actually. Okay, let's um, uh, uh, try to do that um, uh, with RAW2, measure the dynamic susceptibility um, of a straight pipe. So uh, here I have a model that uh, I've built up of uh, three pipes with different DN, DN 400, 280. Uh, <coughs> length is 20 meter, it's uh, simply supported at both ends. Uh, so in, f in order to calculate the dynamic susceptibility, the first step we need to do is we need to create an uh, eigenvalue calculation. In this case, I have two uh, operation load cases, an, an empty and a full one, so I will also create two eigenvalue load cases, uh, one with the eigenvalues um, uh, for the full system um, and one, um, one with the empty state. So eigenvalues for the full state and <coughs> also the one, um, so I take the op operating data from the full state and um, eigenvalues um, empty and this one is uh, based on the empty case. The next step is we have to define a modal response load case in which we uh, um, excite with a given um, um, uh, with a given velocity spectrum. Yeah? So the first one I will call it a ds um, empty and um, 
I have to specify that I would like to use the uh, superposition method maximum here because I don't want to mix the different frequencies and I also do not consider rest mode and I will do the same thing again and call this um, ds full for the second one and this one will be based on the uh, full load case. Let's see, this one should be on empty and this one should be on full. Okay, um, again I need to specify no rest mode and the maximum here. Okay, next step is um, I need to specify the um, uh, spectra. So I will create a spectra um, that is uh, uh, an acceleration spectra and it needs to be uh, a, a constant velocity. So uh, the new spectrum for one uh, meter per second um, it should uh, be zero at uh, zero uh, frequency and then it should increase linear so let's make it up to 100 hertz and um, we want to go to one meter per second at 100 hertz so the acceleration would be 2 pi times uh, frequency uh, um, uh, so this would be um, 2 times uh, 3, so 6.28 times 100, so 628. Um, uh, and then I go uh, back down at higher frequencies, let's go back to zero. Yeah. So um, this would be my first um, spectra here and I will use the same spectra um, in the uh, combination. So I will create a new combination in which I put the vertical spectra and uh, the other direction. Uh, let's keep it uh, uh, empty here because I only want to look in the sim simple uh, di direction here. Uh, now I have to um, select my system and I have to apply this um, spectra combination to all the supports and I will do, do the same thing for the empty case here and apply the spectra and now I can run the calculation to check the results. So let's have a look at the results. First of all, let's have a glimpse at the um, uh, mode shape itself. So the first mode shape is of course in the thinnest line, uh, the second one in the next bigger line, and the third one would be the uh, second mode shape in the first one, and so on and so on. And we can see that basically the different mode shapes have uh, different frequencies and uh, for the different lines. Now um, let's have a look at the dynamic susceptibility and um, here I've prepared some tags to um, easier see uh, the different effects. So I have prepared a tag for the displacements, the velocity uh, and the acceleration and also the uh, equivalent stress here in the middle of the pipe. Yeah. So if you look at the deflection and you know that this um, uh, it's simply supported here so of course the maximum bending moment would be in the middle so the maximum stresses would show up here in the middle yeah, like this. Um, so we can d uh, d define the maximum stresses and we can also see the maximum uh, speed here and the speed is 1.2 meter per second so it's a little bit higher than the 1 meter per second that we uh, said we want to excite but of course uh, the, the system is has no speed at the attachment points and a higher speed in the middle so the average speed now is 1 meter per second uh, squared. If um, uh, we take the um, uh, and we can see that the speed is exactly the same at all the three uh, lines here um, because they are um, uh, that's the way the spectrum was given so even though, though the spectrum is uh, increasing in acceleration well it's the same gives the same speed for all the systems and uh, you cannot see that the stresses are more or less the same for the three lines but the displacements are very different yeah so here the displacement is uh, 300 130 and only 70 millimeters um, and the speed is 1.2 meter and for the acceleration it's the inverse there's a higher acceleration for the bigger pipe and a lower acceleration for the smaller pipe um, I've prepared a small uh, Excel sheet to calculate actually the uh, dynamic susceptibility here for the um, uh, three DNs I have in the system first of all I calculated the, the theoretical um, uh, uh, FDS and uh, this one is uh, as uh, calculated also in the norm 50 uh, uh, around 58 57 here and uh, of course this changes for a full pipe so if I consider medium density here uh, it would increase a bit 
Um, and now I've put here the uh, for the three lines the stresses um, calculated in the row two model uh, and uh, divided it by the speed of the row two model and uh, I get the dynamic susceptibility of my point here in the middle uh, in this piping system and we can see it's pretty close to this minimum 58 uh, uh, of the uh, fundamental dynamic susceptibility. And I can also do this now for the um, full system uh, and ch check um, uh, uh, the DS for that. And I've done this here in the lower part. And the dynamic susceptibility is again a little bit higher than this theoretical um, minimum. Um, now, um, this dynamic susceptibility as written in the standard in the 13480 um, uh, references the absolute maximum velocity in the system. And I think this is not a really very useful um, uh, um, uh, situation. Um, and I would like to um, uh, show you why. So I've prepared another model um, in which I've put um, some um, intermediate nodes. Um, and uh, now, um, uh, well, first of all, le let's check the results here. And um, um, if I check uh, again the, the dynam dynamic susceptibility, um, I get, first of all, very similar um, values here um, in the middle as before. Yeah. Uh, of course, this is normal. I'm still on a straight pipe. Uh, everything is, is in the same way. But what happens now if I um, decrease, uh, uh, if I change the system? So, for example, I remove um, uh, the end uh, nodes here uh, and I uh, make it an open end um, and um, even worse I will um, reduce some of the sections here um, I, I will reduce the DN here to the, the smallest DN we have at uh, DN80 here um, and uh, maybe even uh, select the uh, next part um, here and make this also a little bit smaller go to DN100 uh, and now I'm going to run the calculation again and now the question is um, um, if the uh, if I have a very uh, inhomogeneous system then of course I will get locations with very very high speeds and um, uh, these um, will basically be in the denominator of the dynamic susceptibility therefore they will actually decrease the, um, the, 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 the ratio of this dynamic susceptibility and it's not so easy um, uh, to identify the zones which are really critical yeah so if I take the um, uh, a modal uh, response method again um, I can um, now see that the um, um, velocity maybe I can put some velocity tags on on the end here as well and uh, let me take here velocities and put it at those end and uh, uh, I can see that the now the velocity at the end here is uh, 4,000, so 4 meter per second squared, and the uh, stresses here at the supports are, um, yeah, again about 100 n newton per millimeter squared. But so, but if I build the ratio, this is actually uh, decreasing. Um, but I have to d identify the stresses, of course, at the worst location. And now I realize the worst stresses are here at this uh, connection point. Yeah, um, the stresses are 256. Um, so. Um, 200, uh, yeah, 60. So this would be um, yeah, something like uh, uh, 260 and um, uh, 4,100, and uh, so the ratio would be um, yeah, first one. It would be around 63 again, yeah. So um, but basically, even though this point now has a much higher stresses um, than uh, the, um, this, uh, the rest of the system, uh, the dynamic susceptibility that is calculated is still very close to the original one. So my proposal is to actually uh, calculate it uh, relatively to the excitation speed, yeah. And the excitation speed is exactly the same here. It's this one meter per second squared that we're um, using, yeah. So we still need to discuss the um, um, calculation of the stresses, including the stress intensification factors. But I think I'm going to reserve this for the next talks, talk. So um, I say bye-bye um, for today and uh, see you next time.